Hey guys, I'm Andrea. And I'm Haley. And you're listening to Inhuman, a true crime podcast. Okay guys, so today I have a pretty um, volatile case to share with you guys. Um, I'm sure many of you know it and it is like currently unfolding um, in the news kind of as we speak. Um, But before I get started, I just want to remind you guys to rate and review us um, over on Apple Podcast. Make sure you're subscribed and following us on any other platforms that you may be listening to us from. Um, We really do appreciate all of your ratings and reviews because it does help us a lot. So continue doing that. (laughs) Yeah, I know we have like a couple. Oh, gosh, something just fell. Okay. Um, I know we have a couple new listeners, just uh, people who have heard some of our more recent cases that we've shared about because we've been sharing a lot that are like currently happening and stuff. So um, I know we have a couple new right. listeners. So if you are new here, if you wouldn't mind taking like 15 seconds and giving us some uh, stars, five if you think we deserve it, but you know, be honest and we'd right. love to hear your feedback too if you have time to leave a review. But if you don't, that's okay. You can just leave stars. We appreciate that just as much. Absolutely. And be kind. <laughs> even if it's, even if it's a, what is it? Constructive criticism, just be kind. Yeah. Well, we love constructive criticism, but it needs to be constructive. Yeah. That That's appreciated. The, right. Like hate is yeah, not appreciated. Not hurtful. Yeah. No, not at all. Anyway. So the case I'm going to be covering today, like I said, um, I think I said is still ongoing. Um, so there's, there's going to be a conclusion. There's definitely going to be a nice big fat conclusion, but for now, um, it's ongoing and I am going to be covering the case of Lori Vallow, Chad Daybell, and Lori's children, um, Tylee and JJ. So Lori Vallow, who was born, Lori Cox, was born in 1973. In 1992, when she was 19 years old, she married her high school sweetheart. But the couple didn't last long, and soon after, they got a divorce. Aw. Yeah. Don't say aw. (laughs) Just kidding. Um, I mean, yeah, it is sad. It is sad, but fuck fuck that bitch. Okay. Um, So when Lori was 22 in 1995, she married again, and this time she married a man named William LaGoya, and they had a son together named Colby. But soon after, they too got divorced. Oh my. Um, In 2001, she married another man named Joseph Ryan, and he actually adopted her son Colby, and then the couple went on to have a child of their own, and her name was Tylee. Oh, I like that name. Yeah, it's very original. I've never heard that name before. Yeah. It's like Kylie and Tyler mixed together. Right. <laughs> so in 2004, however, Joseph filed for divorce and things got pretty messy. Due to the fact they had children, they couldn't make a clean break and therefore couldn't agree on the terms of their divorce, which is common. I mean, unfortunately, it's, you know, kids make things a little bit more difficult. And to make matters worse, Joseph was attacked by Lori's brother, Alex, in 2017. Or excuse me, 2007. Oh my God. Yes. Allegedly, Lori told her brother that she and the children were being abused and like by Joseph and made some pretty harmful allegations against him. And Alex spent 90 days, 90 days in jail for this crime. While in jail, he made more threats towards Joseph, such as giving his picture and address to other inmates and saying that he was going to have them, quote unquote, take care of the situation. Oh, my God. Yeah. Now, the things that she was saying about Joseph, none of it really was proven to be true. Um, So it was just kind of her word against his. So keep that in your back pocket. Okay. So Lori... Now in 2006, she remarried again, this time to a man named Charles Vallow. Charles was a member of the LDS community, which is the Latter-day Saints, as was Lori. And Charles had two sons from a previous relationship. And then him and Lori actually went on to adopt his great 
or excuse me, his grand nephew, JJ. So his sister's daughter oh. um, was unable to take care of her son. And so he offered to okay. adopt him. So it's his sister's grandson. Yes. And there's there's no information as to why she herself didn't adopt JJ. Um, but he was on the auti- autism spectrum. So there was some, you know, speculation that the mother couldn't handle that. And so she kind of relinquished her rights, which is so sad. Okay. Yeah. So then the family moved from Arizona to Hawaii for about two years. Um, and then they eventually relocated back to Arizona. So Lori was pretty devout in her faith. And she had began reading a series by Chad Daybell called Standing in Holy Places, which were books basically about doomsday, end of times, all in a religious fashion. From all accounts, Lori became pretty obsessed with the series. And as a, re- as a result, she began to follow some subgroups of the LDS church. However, a lot of these teachings were not recognized by the LDS community. Like it was pretty extreme stuff. And some of it was just really off the wall. And the LDS community later said, like, we didn't at all support those teachings or those learnings or anything. Right. So Lori got really into a woman named Julie Rowe, who was a podcaster and a self-proclaimed clairvoyant. She was also in the LDS community. um, And this Julie character was also in close ties with Chad Daybell, the author of the series that I was mentioning before. Okay. So you can see why Lori probably got really into her because she was really into those books. (laughs) Right. (laughs) But due to Julie's radical beliefs and teachings, she was actually actually exiled from the LDS church, which is a pretty big deal. Yeah. So between these two things, I feel like this sent Lori into a spiral of disturbing thoughts and behaviors. And Chad, he was kind of on the same wavelength, wavelength mentally. Like he was really into some of that radical teaching um but he was married and had five kids and lived in idaho so you know there wasn't a lot of back and forth you know going on between them at all so chad as i mentioned before he had some really radical beliefs and he believed that he had crossed over to the quote-unquote other side due to some near-death experiences he had had which was the same thing that julie Row lady um, had mentioned like in her podcast and some of her stuff that she had, you know, died and come back to life. And that's why she was able to have like these clairvoyant, you know, gifts. Right. I'm all for people like believing whatever they want. Yeah. um, As long as it doesn't lead to harm of themselves or others. Right. And that's. You know, my next line is literally, don't get me wrong. I definitely believe that people have these experiences and that (laughs) people can have special gifts. Um, I definitely think that's a real thing. But with these people, it just sounds like they were looking for attention. And so they were kind of making up some stuff or maybe they believed it in their own heads. I don't know. Um, But they kind of went off the deep end with this information. So extremists in any group, any group can often lead to not good outcomes and circumstances. So yeah. Within his extremist community, Chad became a bit of a celebrity due to his, you know, books that he had written and his tellings of his, you know, crossing over to the other side. And he had a lot of stories (laughs) and people often referred to his group as a quote unquote doomsday cult. Oh God. Which when you start throwing around that cult word, (laughs) That brings a whole new light to whatever you're trying to do. It doesn't sound good. This is giving me vibes of, um, have you watched The Sinner on Netflix? Yes. That was such a good show. The one season that's like, I think you're actually the one one who told me to watch it. But the one season where it was like. That That one guy? Yeah. Like this is giving me those vibes. Okay. So back to Lori again. Um, It's now. 2018, and Joseph, which is Lori's ex and Tylee's biological father, was found dead in his apartment. Oh, my God. Yeah. 
a neighbor had smelt a rancid smell and called police. <sighs> yeah. They actually had to, he had a, an additional lock on his door. So like he rented an apartment and, you know, typically you just use the locks that the apartment had, but he had installed his own lock. And so they were unable to get into his apartment. So they had to actually get a ladder and climb up to his balcony and like break through the balcony door. I guess it was unlocked maybe to enter the apartment. And when they entered the apartment, they found Joseph's body, which was severely decomposed. Like bugs had entered and everything. That's so disgusting. Yeah. So during his autopsy, it was discovered that he had had a heart attack And soon after, he was cremated. Okay. So he died of a heart attack. Yeah. His life insurance policy went to Lori um, until Tylee was old enough to collect for herself, um, which is common, you know. Right. In that situation. But there was a lot of speculation that she immediately used the money. And it's worth noting that... There was actually a recording of Lori during a teaching at her church stating how she was going to murder Joseph, but had decided to turn that anger into energy for her faith. Um, okay. I'm pretty sure any time you say I'm going to murder somebody that that can be used as like, you know, evidence, suspicion. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. But I guess it never went anywhere because, I mean, he had a heart attack, which you can make people have heart attacks. True. So I don't know. But due to the fact that his body was decomposed and cremated, there was really nothing more they could look into concerning the events of his death. Plus, he was 59 at the time, so they just were like, it's probably an accident. Possible, yeah. Yeah. I have a question. Did they, like, think at all that it was suspicious that he was cremated? No, that was his wishes at the time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So in 2018, Lori goes to this event in Utah called Preparing the People. And there, she finally got to meet Chad Daybell. Dun, dun, dun. I know. (laughs) Chad had a book stand there, and Lori went right up to him and introduced herself. They clicked immediately. Chad actually told Lori that they had been married many times in their past lives, which I guess is something common in... The LDS faith that that you are born again over and over. Right. And then you like marry the same person? Well, I think you have different lives. So oh, okay. I guess he's saying that like because of his special gifts, he knows that they like were married before. Okay. Interesting. Like as different people in different lives. Okay. To each their own. Everybody can believe yeah. what they want to believe. Yeah. I mean, if that's what you believe. I, I, I just didn't know for sure if that was, like, actually something that they believed or if that was just okay. what one source said, you know. So okay. if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but that's what okay. my source said. Okay. And I will have all the sources linked down in the show notes. So Yeah. Which, by the way, I heard on Morbid the other day that they were saying that a lot of people don't know what the show notes are, so they were explaining it. So I thought that it would be a good idea to just explain the show notes are like the description oh yeah in your podcast <laughs> app um I didn't you know I mean it makes sense I didn't know what show notes were before I listened to podcasts and that's what the morbid hosts were saying and I was like you know what that would be a good thing to say on our podcast so yeah if you didn't know that's how you get the show notes yeah scroll all the way down to the episode like in the episode and it'll be down there then later in that same year there was another event the same preparing the people type event. This time, however, it was in Arizona. And since Lori, Lori's then husband, Charles, was out of town, Lori invited Chad and another friend of hers, Melanie, and she'll come up a lot in the story, um, to stay with her at her home during the event. Melanie reported that Lori and Chad spent a lot of alone time together during this trip, and she had some suspicions. So in January of 2019, 2019 while Charles was out of town for work Lori finally decides to leave Charles but this bitch (laughs) I would have been I would (laughs) have so she canceled his flight home and then she took $35,000 out of their (gasps) joint bank account which was basically all the money that they had. He was left with like $10 to his freaking name. Oh my God. Yeah. So she also took the children, Tylee and JJ, which Tylee was her 
daughter and you know JJ was the adopted child that they had together and her oldest son Colby which I mentioned at the beginning of the story he was already grown and out of the home at this point so he was doing his own thing somehow Charles managed to get home and he immediately called the police and he soon realized not only had she wiped their bank account but she also took everything out of their home so just all around shitty yeah (laughs) shitty 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 Um, Charles was worried about the safety of the children, and he called the police to basically do a well check on Lori, because Lori had been displaying some behaviors that were concerning to Charles to go along with, like, her radical beliefs and stuff, which he was not, like, hip to at all. He wasn't down for all that madness. (laughs) He told police that Lori had said, quote, I'm going to kill you. You're going to be murdered today or tomorrow. Okay. Which, I guess she had, like, kind of claimed that, like, God or... You know, whoever she believes in or worships or whatever had, like, told her that. (laughs) Again, to each your own. (laughs) Well, yeah. I mean, I don't think I don't think the God that I worship tells people to kill people because that's just not like the right thing to do. You're supposed to be like a good person and killing people is not a good thing at all. Right. But she was kind of, you know, all for rocker at this point. Okay. Lori also tells police that Charles had been cheating on her and that he was abusive. And Charles immediately rushed to the police department to meet with the police. And he had asked them um, over the phone to do like a mental health check on Lori. And so he, when he got there, he double checked to see if they were going to do that. The police had also reached out to Lori and Charles's LDS bishop who had witnessed and confirmed Lori's concerning behaviors. However, he had no evidence at that time that she was making any threats to herself, the kids, or Charles. And Lori was not taken that day for the mental health evaluation. However, it is documented that a couple days later, she admitted herself and she passed the evaluation with flying colors, which is like, how? Of course. Like, how? That that reminds me of um, Josh Powell, and he did, Mm. like, a court-mandated evaluation, and that, that evaluator determined nothing was wrong and he ended up murdering his two sons so like you know i mean they're doing True. they're just doing their jobs and from their job like from their what they're they checking are off. supposed to do right yeah but you never know people can be very good manipulators and hide stuff and yeah yep you're right so in february of 2019 charles filed for divorce from Lori. And he also filed for temp- temporary custody of JJ. I don't think he adopted Tylee, so unfortunately there wasn't much he could do concerning her. He also requested that the money, his and JJ's belongings, all be returned. But at this point, Laurie was currently MIA. And she stayed MIA, which is missing in action, um, for almost two months. I think it was like 57 or 58 days, something like oh, that. Oh, wow. Okay. No one could get in touch with her. No one knew where she was. She was just poof, right into thin air. Luckily, though, at this time, JJ was in the care of Charles and Tylee was staying with another family member or family friend. Strangely, though, in March of 2019, Charles decided to drop the petition for divorce and seemingly wanted to try and reconcile his marriage with Lori, which like, what? (laughs) What? Like, randomly, yeah, that's a little weird. I mean, if it was, like, any other circumstances, I'd be like, okay, you know, give it another go. Give it, you know, try it, try to make it work. But, like, all, he, she said he was, she was going to murder her. <laughs> or he said, she said he was going, hold on. She said she was going to murder him. <laughs> like, right? no. <laughs> Why would you get back? Yeah, no. No. But due to an incident that occurred soon after between Alex, Lori's brother, and Charles, Charles would never get that opportunity. According to Alex, Charles tried to attack Alex with a baseball bat, and Alex ran and retrieved a gun and shot Charles in the chest in quote-unquote self-defense. Ah, I see. And Charles succumbed to his injuries, unfortunately. Wow. Okay. When paramedics arrived on scene, they stated that they did not see any evidence that CPR had been performed, which Alex had told the dispatcher over the 911 call he had attempted. Because if you give CPR to a gunshot victim, there will be large amounts of pooled blood. 
and there was there was just the pool of blood that was expected to be there after I being see. shot. Okay, so you wouldn't have it, it. There's no indication that he had tried to save him. Correct. And surprisingly enough, Alex is not arrested or charged with this incident at all. Wow. And then Lori, who is Charles's wife, mind you, went on to have a pool party at her home that evening. <gasps> oh so my the God. same home, the same home that her husband had just been killed. Excuse me? Excuse me. Yep. Even if even if she didn't like him anymore, <laughs> like somebody was just killed in your home, you don't have a pool party. I'm sorry, Mm-mm. but no. No. You don't. And it was reported by police that she was like laughing and like joking and she like when they did her interview like of the accounts that happened and she's like huh my neighbors are gonna hate us after this we just moved into the neighborhood (laughs) like what that's not something to joke again even if you don't like him anymore and you like whatever you're not sad that he died somebody was killed in your house yeah have some couth (laughs) right it is also reported that Lori notified Charles's other two adult children that their father had died over text message. And they were trying, I know, so Yeah, that's tasteless. weird. Yeah. And they were, like, desperately trying to get information from her. And, like, she just was not responding. And it's suspected that the reason why she didn't want to divulge that information to the children is because their father's death was not what it appeared to be and they and she knew that they would most likely definitely want an investigation to occur right and she she probably didn't want to say anything that like wasn't what she was going to tell the police or whatever like she didn't want to incriminate herself exactly and then alex good old alex he so this is the second time he's attacked one of her men's (laughs) one of her mans keep that in your back pocket too yeah so, he left the country and flew to Colombia for several months. So, Col- Colombia, like the country, is, um, what do they call it? Like, when you, like, you can't avoid extra, extradition. Ex- extradition. Extra, extradition. Oh, right. I can't say that word. Yeah, so, like, they don't think that's why he went there, but there was a reason and, it, and no one ever figured it out. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it was never determined why he went there, but he went there for several months and then he came back. After Charles's death, Lori then bought Chad a plane ticket, so old Chad Daybell, a plane ticket to Arizona from Utah. Luckily, before Charles was killed, he changed over his insurance policy from Lori to his sister Kay, which pissed her off, but she didn't know at the right. time. She found out later. Oh, but- okay. So that yeah. couldn't that wouldn't necessarily be a motive. When he was killed, it it's definitely a motive because she thought it was still in her name. Oh, 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 I see. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So as though we don't already have, you know, crazy alarming behavior from Lori, now we really start seeing some very, very alarming behavior from her. The first being that Lori tries to sell JJ's service dog. So as I mentioned before, like, you know, JJ was on the spectrum. And I did read in one source that he was nonverbal. Um, so I imagine this dog, you know, helped him tremendously. And right. she tried to sell it. Why? I don't know. Once we get to the end of the story, it might make a little bit more sense. But so I learned that if you purchase a service dog from a rescue and want to get rid of that service dog, you must return or sell the dog back to that rescue. Okay. And someone in that kind of community saw Lori's posting about the dog and basically told her like you have to give it back to the the, to the rescue and she did at least she did something right thankfully yeah (laughs) well I think she was called out on her shit so she had to you know yeah around this same time Kay who was JJ's grandmother so Kay being you know Charles's sister that had the daughter who couldn't take care of JJ at the time she called police and requested a well check of JJ because she had not seen or heard from him. And Lori was not responding to any of Kay's calls or texts. And this was very worrisome to her. However, for some reason, her request was like severely delayed. So they didn't go out there that day and check on JJ. Soon after all of these events occur, 
Lori uproots the children and moves everyone to Idaho. Even though our dear boy Chad is still technically married to his wife. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Lori's friend Melanie, which I mentioned her earlier in the story, Lori told her that Chad's wife would pass away unexpectedly before she and the kids moved. However, his wife did not pass away, thankfully. Yeah. Reports also state that Tylee, who was 16 at the time, did not want to move to Idaho and had planned to originally or had originally planned to stay in Arizona, but closer to the time of the move had decided to go so she could help take care of and protect her little brother, JJ. So that's pretty telling in of itself. Yeah. So the three of them and Chad all moved in together into a townhouse in Rexburg, Idaho, which is where Chad lived. In September of 2019, Lori, Chad, Tylee, and JJ all took a road trip to Yellowstone National Park. And this would be the last time anyone would see or hear from the children. Mm. There was um, tower pings on Tylee's cell phone and there were pictures taken from this trip. So there was like confirmation that they were there, but that was the last time that they were seen. There are also reports from Lori's friend Melanie, again, that Lori told her that JJ had turned into a zombie, which is another word that they use in their little whatever made up religion. Um, not the LDS religion, but like their subgroup right, their, of it. Right. Um, which is like they refer to that as like an evil spirit. Okay. And claim that he had said that he loves Satan, which is really odd because, like I said before, in one of the sources I read, JJ was said to be nonverbal. So nonverbal, oh, okay. you don't speak. You can maybe right. sign like you know, use sign language right. or whatever. But yeah, I just don't believe that. Yeah. Okay. I messed up. When I said, I'm going to just say this and you can leave it in. But when I said that this would be the last time anyone would see from the children, I actually meant just Tylee. <laughs> okay. So the Yellowstone Park trip, that was the last time anyone would see or hear from Tylee. So three weeks, it's been three weeks since they moved to um, Idaho and, G and JJ was enrolled in school. Lori decided to pull JJ from school and she told his nanny that she would no longer be needing him because JJ was going to stay with his grandparents. So the next event was that someone attempted to shoot and kill Chad's wife, Tammy. And it later came out that the attempt on her life was made by none other than, drum roll please, Alex. Fucking Big brother surprise. Alex. Yes. So 10 days later, in October of 2019, Tammy is pronounced dead in her home, in her bed, and her death is ruled to be from natural causes. Interesting. Yeah. And surprise, surprise, Chad did not request an autopsy. Another thing worth mentioning is that Melanie's husband, Brandon, was also attacked and someone attempted to kill him and he took their kids and went into hiding. So the friend Melanie, that happened to her husband and her children. Okay. After Melanie could not locate her children, she and Alex decided to move to Idaho. They were not a couple. There was no indicator that they were a couple, but they just, I guess, wanted to be closer to Chad and Lori. <laughs> There's a lot more to that Melanie story, but I'm not really going to go into it because it's not really about her. Um, but her behavior was very similar to Lori's behavior. So now it's November of 2019. Lori and Chad took a trip to Hawaii and essentially eloped. So, you know like a month later and right. getting married <laughs> around this time the fbi starts getting tips surrounding Lori, chad alex and melanie and things were just not adding up so once Lori and chad arrive back to arizona k which is charles's brother jj's grandmother again requests a well check on her grandson and finally the police arrive at their town home and there is no sign of jj Lori tells police that JJ is currently staying with her friend Melanie in Arizona and Chad calls Melanie and gives her a heads up and tells her to evade police and she basically complies. All right. Thankfully, though, soon she has a small teeny tiny change of heart and doesn't want to be involved in all of this and calls Lori to 
to tell her, hey, I'm, you know, I'm done covering for you guys or, you know, doing whatever you want me to do. And she recorded the call between uh, Lori and herself. There wasn't anything, you know, really telling or vital to the case. Um, but Lori was on to her. She could tell that, like, something was up. So... Another interesting thing worth mentioning again about Alex and Melanie is that the both of them flew to Vegas to get married again, not to each other, but to people in their fanatical community. And they both, even Alex, takes the the last name of his new spouse, which like people do that. It's interesting. It's not like, you know, it's not the craziest thing I've ever heard, but you know, it's suspicious that they're trying to kind of evade police a little bit. And so that's why they did it. I don't know. Okay. So during this time, Lori and Chad fly back to Hawaii and they rent a condo and the FBI got the local police involved and they began surveying the couple. While they're in Hawaii, police petitioned to have Chad's Um, deceased wife Tammy's body exhumed to do a formal autopsy due to all the suspicion that was starting to arise around the couple and soon after that Alex Lori's brother passes away from a supposed blood clot excuse me so this is now the third person in her life to pass away from natural causes um yeah from natural causes yeah natural causes yeah okay because um, Charles was shot, but it was like an accident or whatever you want to say. Yeah, That's right. And he did have an autopsy performed, and it was determined that he did pass from a blood clot. But again, like I mentioned in the Charles case, like his autopsy, I feel like there's ways you can make things look like accidents. Like, you can make it look like someone had a tire oh, attack. a thousand percent. You can make it look like someone had a blood clot. I don't know how, because I'm not that kind of person but i just feel like it's right. it's, ver- it's very possible yeah thousand percent so finally law enforcement is beginning to piece all of these you know tragedies and all of these tidbits of information together surrounding these people and they are officially named persons of interest in the death of tammy daybell wow okay yeah. So police obtained a search warrant for Chad's home in Idaho, and they recovered almost 50 items for evidence. However, one big question still remains. Where are Tylee and JJ? Yeah. In January of 2020, local police notify Lori that she has five days to show proof of life for both children. Wow, okay. And she just simply refused to comply. (sighs) Which is like... I'm... It, They're your fucking yeah. kids, man. Like, those are your kids. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it just doesn't, it makes no sense. No man is worth no. killing or, you know, whatever your kids do. So now an official investigation into the children's whereabouts begin. Kay, who is Charles's sister and JJ's grandmother, um, she has been advocating for her grandson's safety the whole time, addresses Lori in the media and demands she tell law enforcement where JJ is. The five days comes and goes, and Lori is arrested finally on several charges. In March of 2020, Lori is sent back to an Idaho prison due to complaints of that the prison in Hawaii is too too rough, too dirty, and just <laughs> too hard. Like, meh. Oh, my God. Are you kidding? No. And I wrote, oh my God. boo freaking who, bitch. <laughs> yeah. So, Chad, meanwhile, is still free. While in prison, Lori met with her lawyer, and their meetings were accidentally and unlawfully recorded due to some new oh. COVID procedures that were currently in place. I couldn't find anything that, like, said that she, like, admitted to anything, but there was, I guess, some information on there. I'm sure because the case is still ongoing, they don't want to release that information. Right. And her bell was set by the judge for $1 million. Wow, okay. So in June of 2020, police get another warrant to search the grounds of Chad Daybell's home. And in a few short hours, human remains are found. And I'm just going to go ahead and give a trigger warning. It does include, sadly, it does include child death and Mm. some pretty... um, disgusting details about their death so the remains were confirmed to be tylee and jj 
JJ was in his red pajamas. He was wrapped in a plastic, like, I guess kind of like a tarp, a plastic tarp. Mm. And he was bound by duct tape on his mouth, his hands, and his feet. And one of the articles that I read, just from the fact that he was, his mouth was duct tape, said that he was probably still alive when he was put in into the ground. Mm. Tylee, her body had been dismembered and burned. Mm. Oh my god. And they were both buried. JJ's death was ruled, or JJ's cause of death was ruled uh, from as- asphyxiation. He was only seven years old. Oh my god. It was too difficult to determine the cause of death for Tylee because she was so severely burned. And it's alleged that both children were buried in Chad's backyard when his wife, Tammy, was still alive. Oh my god. And she had no idea. Chad was then arrested and his bail was set for $1 million million in January of this year. So January of 2021. The autopsy of Tammy was finally completed. So it was like basically a year, like right under a year that it took them to complete and, you know, get a conclusion for her autopsy. However, it has not been released to the public again, I'm assuming because the trial is ongoing. In May, both Lori and Chad were additionally charged with first-degree murder, conspiracy to commit murder, plus the slew of other charges against them. And we learned that among the victims they were charged with for the murders, Tammy is one of those victims. So it's safe to assume her autopsy proved that she did not die of natural causes after all, which we all knew. (laughs) Yeah. It's good to see the autopsy actually, like, confirm that. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad because, I mean, it, it was just too obvious. But, you know, he was the right. husband, so he got to say whether or not she got an autopsy. Right. In June of this year, Lori was committed to a mental health and well-being hospital and was deemed not fit to stand trial. Okay, interesting. Chad, on the other hand, was deemed of sound mind and is fully capable of standing trial. He, however, pleaded not guilty, but... They are planning to seek the death penalty for the deaths of Tammy, Tylee, and JJ. And they assume as soon as Lori is, you know, willing and able mentally to stand trial, she will also more than likely see the same results. So they um, pretty much assume that she'll get the death penalty as well. Right. As of yet... There have been no more advancements in this case at this time. Like I said, it is ongoing, and I will uh, continue to keep you guys updated as more information unfolds. Thank goodness. Yeah, I mean, it's not conclusion, but at least somebody has been arrested and charged. We know, yeah, we know they fucking did it, and we know that they're they're going to be charged. Oh, yeah. They and, better be. You know, I think there's a lot of gray area when it comes to the death penalty. I agree. But in this situation, like, I think it's just. Yeah. I mean, you, so. you murdered your kids. This is like Chris Watts. Duh. Don't even get me started on that piece of shit. So many people have been commenting on our Instagram about the Gabby Petito case that the guy is giving him Chris Watts vibes. And I'm like, yes. I said that. Remember? I think I said Chris yeah, you Williams. Did. But I was like, he, it's similar. Like, with Chris Watts, though, like, I immediately was like, that fucker did something. Right. But with this guy, I'm like, oh, is he just a really good actor? Right. Or, you know, I don't know. We'll get into that more later, but. Yeah. <sighs> so that is the case of the murder of Tylee and JJ, Tammy, Charles, fuck Lori, fuck Alex, and fuck <laughs> Chad. Yeah. And fuck Melanie, too, while I'm at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't sue me. Wow. Yeah. But I will, like I said, I'll keep you guys updated. We'll update you on our Instagram page, which is at inhuman underscore podcast. And I will be posting pictures from this, you know, this episode of all these crazy people and all the crazy. Well, I won't post pictures of the crazy stuff that they did, but, you know, I'll be posting some pictures to give you guys some visuals. Um, But we just want to thank you guys for listening. Like we said at the top of the episode, make sure you... Give us a rating and a review. We'd really appreciate it. Yes, please. We always, we really appreciate you guys' support. 
And thank you so much for listening. And until next time, keep it human. Bye.